I'm half Navajo. For years of my life, I lived on the Navajo Nation Reservation in a small town called Shiprock in New Mexico. My Native American side of my family always warned us to be careful at night. My grandparents would always tell me stories of these shape-shifting witches who can curse you, kill you, or mess with you. They called them skinwalkers because they could take the skin of dead animals and wear them to change into that animal, or something in between a human and animal. Not a werewolf. I never believed in it, really. I'm only half Navajo and light-skinned, so I was never treated the same by most people here. So I drifted away from the culture and thought it wasn't for me. If you're a skeptic, that's fine. I was also until I came face to face with things I can't explain. It was around summer. This happens when I was in high school, so about six to possibly eight years ago. I would have been like 15 or 17 then. I used to hang out with a group of guys who liked to do a lot of delinquent type stuff. You know, smoke cigarettes, stay up all night with the guys, and playing video games at somebody's house. Then at 3 in the morning, if we felt like it, we would go sneak out to Paradise. I know, it's ironic, the name. It's basically a giant metal pipe that carries irrigation water to all the farms, but really, it was also a spot for kids to drink or get high in the evenings. However, the place did have a scary history of kids and adults who drowned or died in the night. I always thought those were urban legends though. At 3 a.m., that was our time we as boys would test one another to cross this pipe. Sort of an initiation, see how far we could go. We usually could go all the way across. Now, keep in mind that pipe goes well over three stories high, it's also wide. I'd say as wide as an average car. And we would walk this thing for kicks in a group of nine at three in the morning. So one night, me and a small group of friends were driving around bored at 2 a.m. wanting to spook each other. So I said, let's go to paradise and walk the pipe, as most of these friends I was hanging out with had never done anything like that before. They agreed, pumped up on energy drinks, and we drove. It was pretty quiet, the sky was dark, and the night was cold. The boys with me were Michael, Cordy, Tommy, and Theryl. Now, Theryl was the driver because he had the car, and his family was pretty well off too, so he never had to worry about cash. We got to the place, and he didn't want to go said his parents were traditional, and he just wanted to chill in the car. Basically, he wanted to text some chick, I'm sure, without us bugging him. I told him it's fine, keep the car locked and running in case we see something scary. Then me and the other boys went on without him. I remember we noticed a sheep or goat skin placed flat off to the right, just as we were starting to get on the pipe. We all noticed it looked strange, and I remember someone commenting it looked like a ritual sacrifice. Michael said something about a pentagram, but I wasn't sure if he was just joking or serious, but I thought they were just trying to scare each other. As we got onto the pipe, a few of the guys were scared and had me take the lead. As we crawled, I'd say a quarter of the way onto the pipe, talking and laughing, I noticed a faint whitish or light gray bat bigger than my head flying around us. It dived for us a few times and we dodged it, but then Tommy slipped because of his converses and almost fell off of the pipe. I reached out to him, grabbing his right arm. Michael had grabbed my shirt collar and Cordy had grabbed him. All together we got back on the pipe and were shaking that we almost lost Tommy into the dark depths below. Suddenly the bat was gone. We were all freaking out, but the guys wanted to continue. We laughed about it as guys usually do, thinking that was weird. We passed the halfway point on the pipe with no problems, but as we got three quarters of the way across, Michael saw something. You see, at the end of the pipe, there is a hill, and behind that hill is very brightly lit because of a church somewhere off in the distance. Anyways, on that hill, there was a black figure of pointy ears, a dog silhouette. Now, Michael is a tough guy. He yelled at the thing, saying, I'm not scared of you, you damn skinwalker, then tossed a few rocks he had in his pocket. One rock hit the pipe, the others fell into the brush below. That shadow silhouette dog stood up on two legs like a person. We all freaked out, jaws dropped, then Cordy said, look, another one to the left. Tommy said there's another one on the right. So three silhouettes of pointy dog-eared people on the hill. I told them to back up so we can get to the car. The things to the right and the left of the hill started to move down the hill towards us. Now there's just one standing guard on that hill, the one who first stood up. Now we're trying to go back, but we're still three quarters of the way on the pipe, and under us is complete darkness. It was quiet for a few minutes. 
Then we started to hear a girl crying. It sounded like she was hurt and scared, almost in pain. We were overcome with a strange feeling of wanting to help. Michael wanted to go back towards the end and crawl down and help this girl. I almost followed too. Inside, I was like, no, this is wrong. Something isn't right. So I yelled at him and everyone, saying, are you all stupid? Look at that thing up there on the hill. Did you not see those things? It's a trap. Screw that fake crying. If that girl's hurt, we'll come back when the sun's up in two hours and check. Now, the moment I said this, the crying stopped. All the guys freaked out, saying they can't believe what came over them. They said they'd almost forgot what we saw before. Halfway on the pipe now, and we hear a native drum being played like a powwow. We start running, running on this pipe. A third of the way almost to the car, Corey stops us. We can all hear it under our feet, sounding like a pack of snarling, growling, yelping coyotes. But it's pitch dark below, but we know they are under us. We run full speed, not looking back until we hit the car. We yell drive and haul ass on that dirt road back to a well-lit gas station and explain what happened to Theral. We couldn't get the girls crying out of our head and we went back in the daylight just to make sure. We didn't find a girl. Instead, in the area, we listened to a different kind of crying. The sound was a whimper. Then out of the brush, we saw a coyote watching us. It was so close and unafraid of us. It wasn't even shy. I yelled, you see that? That's the girl that was crying. She probably transformed. It's one of them. I then asked the coyote, you're a skinwalker, aren't you? It just looked at us for four seconds, dead in the eye, totally calm, and walked into the brush. We all agreed how unnatural that was for a coyote. We did not go back there after that. My parents had a friend who was a single mother of a child around my age, just a year older. Because of that, we obviously got to hang out together on multiple occasions for years on end. When we were around seven or eight years old, her mom let her have her first sleepover at my house. Everything was doing fine until the sun went down. We wanted to be up extra late, so we snuck out of my room to play some more after my parents went to bed. After a while of sneaking around, we decided we wanted to eat some cereal. I was going through a phase where all I wanted to eat was Captain Crunch. Like lots of families, we had our main fridge in our kitchen and another in our basement. At the time, our basement was unfinished. It was huge, almost the size of our whole house, with three concrete walls and one that was made up of huge gray bricks. Our laundry room was in the top right corner, behind some wooden slat stairs with the gaps between them and against the brick wall. The laundry room wasn't actually a laundry room, just a corner with the washer, dryer, and extra fridge on a square of carpet we laid out so it was softer to stand on than the cold concrete floor when we did laundry. I was naturally terrified of the basement as a child because the corner underneath our wooden stairs had just a single light bulb hanging freely over the laundry room. The brick wall, which was to the right of the laundry appliances, also had a few huge bricks missing up by the exposed ceiling with all the creepy tubes and pink fluffy insulation. There was a crawl space on the other side of the brick wall. Nothing really interesting, and I wasn't tall enough to see over it. But that didn't stop my child brain from imagining stuff on the other side. Obviously, I didn't go down there for my irrational fear of the creepy basement. So of course we open the main fridge upstairs and realize that we have no milk. My friend insists that she has to have cereal, and that we should check the downstairs fridge. Immediately I affirm that there was no way I was going down there especially because it was dark, late at night, and it was just the two of us. Somehow, though, she convinced me, and soon we were creeping down the steps. We had turned on the switch, but it was still so dark since the only light was above the laundry corner, which was conveniently behind the staircase we had just walked down, lighting the way through the gaps in the steps. Once we got down there, I felt braver than ever. I got that childlike surge of adrenaline, and I thought I was the toughest kid, I think my friend felt the same way, because as soon as we turned around and got to the laundry corner, we started sizing up the room in a, that wasn't so bad kind of way. I continue walking to the fridge on the far left to get some milk, and she keeps standing there. At some point between my walk from the start of the carpet to the fridge, she had seen an old pile of toys we kept down in the bottom right corner straight ahead from the top right corner we were in. I had just opened the fridge when I hear her start to scream. 
I turn around and she's standing directly across from me. Her mouth is wide open, her eyes slightly raised up and shaking, and she's doing what looks like high knees in place as she flaps her arms around. Just pure fear. I scream because she is, and we're both up the stairs like darts. As soon as we get to the living room, she throws herself belly down on the floor and starts kicking like a mad woman. My parents come running, of course, and think she's having a seizure on the floor. When they scoop her up, they realize that's not the case. She just starts sobbing. They ask her what's wrong, what hurts. I'm just standing there staring at her with tears streaming down my face. I've never seen someone so terrified in my life to this day. Not even in horror movies. They couldn't get any response besides a hysterical, there was a man with a hat, there was a man with a hat, until she finally calmed down to just crying. Her mom came and picked her up, and my dad went searching around the basement for some man with a bat. I got a talking to for staying up past bedtime, and that was that. I was put back in my room, but I slept with the lights on that night. I didn't see her ever again after that, at least not until years and years later. When I did talk to her years later when she came up on Facebook, I found out she had been in and out of mental hospitals for years since. But I've had a specific experience in that same house that makes me feel like she isn't crazy, but that that thing had made her crazy. We moved a few years after we had fully renovated the house, and I haven't been there since. But I did see him myself. A fedora tipped down so you couldn't see his face, a long trench coat, and what looked like dog-like paws with long claws, which sounds really, really strange. Just typing it out makes me think that I might be insane too. Some people have asked me about what my experience of the hat man is after seeing my previous post about my best friend when we were children. So here it is. A couple years after the initial incident with my childhood best friend, when I was 10, my parents had renovated half of the basement. Now there were two rooms down there, one to the left of the stairs, opposite the laundry corner. My bedroom was moved to one of those. I felt super grown up for basically living down where I used to be scared of and by then I had repressed the shit out of what had happened a few years prior. There was one particular night where I was up late on my laptop in my bedroom. At the top of the basement stairs we had a small half bathroom to the immediate right. I mean very immediate. The bathroom doorway and the basement doorway were almost touching. But anyways, I went upstairs, filled our dog's bowl and went to the bathroom. As I'm ready to be finished, I turn towards the door and hear my dog's claws fast on the hardwood floors. They get louder and louder until I can hear my dog faceplant into the door with this huge thud. This wasn't odd, because our dog at the time was a hyperactive boxer mix and would constantly run so fast across the hardwood that he would start sliding out of control. I see his claws scratching on the floor underneath the crack in the door, something he does when he's impatient. So thinking he's excited to see me, I open it up. And there's nothing. I get this familiar sinking feeling in my gut. I suddenly remember that our dog was having health issues and we had to have him sleep in the garage at night because he would pee in his sleep. We were due to take him to the vet in the morning, but that night, in the past couple, he had been outdoors while we slept. There's no way it could have been my dog. Looking down into the basement stairs, I saw it. A man stood down at the base of the stairs. I couldn't see a face. He wore a hat like a fedora or something, tipped down to obscure it. He had on a trench coat, and from out of the bottom of his two sleeves, there were these weird dog-like claws. Just when his head started to move, I sprinted into my parents' room, screaming about the man with the hat. The memories of what happened to my friend resurfaced. I panicked for I don't remember how long, before my dad had again swept the house and I had been calmed down. I slept in the upstairs bedroom with the light on like I had a couple years before, and I'm sure they assumed it was nothing more than a night terror. It was a few years after that that I found my old friend on Facebook. I caught up with her and asked her how things had been. I always figured her mom was pissed that she was so scared of our house, and that's why I never got to see her again. It turned out that she was committed to a mental hospital not long after that night and she had been in and out of them ever since. She told me about how she was diagnosed with schizophrenia, had been having seizures, visions, and night terrors. I was long out of that house by then, I should clarify. 
We moved after we finished renovating the basement completely and sold the house. I wanted to believe that our mental illness was an excuse for what had happened on that night when we were kids, but I saw him myself years later just as I told you now, and I don't know what that means for me. There's stuff that you think you see, and then there's stuff that you actually do. I still remember how clearly I had heard the pause, and how I had felt the force of the thud on the door through the bathroom tile, and how I clearly saw some obscure man-like creature at the bottom of the stairs. A nightmare or night terror would be plausible if I had been actually sleeping up until that point, but I was wide awake on my laptop just minutes before. I guess there's just some things we don't understand. I never believed in a lot of paranormal things when I was younger, but now I think I've overlooked these things that I've seen or heard about. It turns out my family has many encounters with the paranormal. When my mother was younger, she played with a Ouija board and lightning struck her house, frying the wiring only in her room. When my older brother was a toddler, my parents lived in a house that was on a dirt road. The road was connected to my great grandfather's house. One night, my mother heard my brother talking on the baby monitor. He was saying stuff like, hey there, and what are you doing here? And he would say these things in a happy tone. When I was born, we lived in a trailer that was up the road from our grandmother's house. I don't remember the exact story, but my brother was seeing things again. Now I'm 15, and we live in a brick house not even half a mile away from where the trailer was, and I've had my own encounters. When I was three, my great-grandfather died. He was a great man, and I'm glad to have gotten a chance to see him. But after the funeral, I remember going into the house, sitting down, and someone's hand was on my shoulder. I thought it was my dad until I heard my great-grandfather say, everything will be fine, in a soothing tone. When I turned around, no one was there. Even today, I still see things, and my brother still does too. My brother and I had seen figures in our doorways when we were younger. Garrett said he had seen a man enter at the foot of the bed or at his door just looking at him. I've seen the same, except for this one time that still scares me to this day. About a year and a half ago, I heard our dog whimpering. She's pretty pouty and gets scared when it thunders. So I thought it was raining, so I didn't think anything of it, but it turned out it wasn't thundering or even raining. At the time, I was sleeping facing the wall after all the sounds and stuff, I sit up and look to my left and there's a man again, but he was different. He was wearing a coat of some kind, and with his hands in his pockets, he was just looking at me. Fear was building up in me, so what I did was to just pretend I didn't see him. I laid down and forced my eyes closed. I woke up the next day and didn't say anything. Gary didn't see anything, my parents didn't either, and the house wasn't broken into. After I saw the post on the guy and his friends seeing a hat guy or hat man, I knew it couldn't have been a coincidence. What do you guys think? My friends in this story I'd like to keep anonymous, so we'll call them M, T, and B. This happened about three weeks ago. I'm still shook up from it. My friends and I don't really talk about it simply because if it's either the things I think it could be, I know better than to say their names. Anyway. Back in April, my friends and I began to plan a camping trip. We had created group chats and we were all super excited about it. I should add that all of us are from northern Michigan. Each of us from different small towns, but still, we do basically everything together. Three of us, myself included, have always been into cryptic creatures and stories. M actually goes to bed every night listening to stories from channels like this one. T was the only one in our group unfamiliar with cryptics, however, they have always been into dark and creepy stuff, and all of us have heard the stories of the Michigan Dogman. My friend B has actually claimed to see one. That being said, we originally planned a camping trip out of state on the back roads of Michigan. An unexpected change of plans and suddenly we were going to West Virginia. I had never been out of state, so of course, I was excited. Plus, Mothman. That's just a cool freaking addition to the excitement. Anyway, upon arriving to West Virginia, the first few nights ended in us staying in hotels simply because we could find no land to camp on, but what we did find were trails and abandoned bunkers all over on these trails. 
Our first night, each of us, covered and ready in our tactical gear, went on these trails. I want to say it was around 11 p.m. give or take. Now, let me tell you, the trail we were on had nothing but thick woods next to it on each side. No trails on either side, and without a machete you weren't getting through those woods. We went inside the first bunker, and like tourists do, we took pictures, laughed, and simply acted like fools because they were incredible. The echo inside was insane. We stayed at the first one for about 15 minutes, and I should add that all of these bunkers are quite some distance apart down this trail. M, who's the oldest and most into crypto stuff, took the lead and left B, T, and myself behind a bit. We could still see him in front of us with the flashlight though. We were close to the second bunker, and suddenly B told T and myself to be quiet. M had abruptly stopped as well. In the woods, and remember what I said about there being no way to get through with tools and no trail there, was suddenly a light, resembling a flashlight, and then we heard talking. Now I would have been okay if it had been people, however I was looking at my group of friends, M being literally six feet away from me on the trail, mouth closed. He hadn't said a word, but that voice was M's voice. It was exactly his voice, but he hadn't said anything. We quickly turned our flashlights off, and I began to head back to the van left at the first bunker. M had already taken off, B and T stayed back a few feet because they stood and listened, and then they panicked as well. As soon as our flashlights went off, and we began heading back to the van trying to understand how the hell M was talking to us from the other side of those thick trees, while also standing six feet away from us, and without moving his mouth. We were shook up and very confused. Anyways, as soon as our flashlights turned off and we began walking back, whatever was in the woods immediately shut off whatever light they had, and started heading towards us, through the woods, fast. We didn't stay to find out what was in the woods. We got out of there. I was terrified. Hearing my friend's voice, who genuinely could not have done that, yell, hey and hey come here, over and over scared me more than I'd like to admit. Later that night, we ended up getting lost, and I should probably add that these trails are close to military property. But anyways, we were headed back to the hotel and ended up lost on back roads. All of us still trying to figure it out without freaking out even more. We made it back, thankfully. The next day, we decided we were heading to Pennsylvania. Now, the creature I'm about to talk about, I'll never say out loud. Never. It terrifies me beyond belief and makes my anxiety skyrocket by just the thought. B and M had been dating for quite some time. They have a lot of mutual friends. One of their mutual friends is a resident in a small town in Pennsylvania. A few months back, this mutual friend had gone out to help a farmer who claimed to hear a little girl yelling for help in the woods. Mutual friend took a group of men with them. Long side story short, they came across what they believed to be a wendigo imitating a child to get a poor soul alone in the woods. They loaded it up with bullets until it screeched and ran off. Mutual friend sent audio recordings to B&M. Obviously my friends were intrigued, as were T and myself. I was scared, but curious. Here's where things get bad. Our first night. B is inside paying for the hotel rooms. T, M, and myself are outside. T and I are joking and screwing around while M looked for what he needed in the back of the van. I told T to never, ever call out for the creature, but ignorance is bliss and curiosity really does kill. Without missing a beat, T yells, Hey, Wendigo! And I immediately ran inside while even M looked at him like he was crazy. Nothing happened that night. We enjoyed our hotel and got rested up because we planned on hiking the next day. We went out to state land on a nature preserve pretty popular for Bigfoot sightings. We were excited. B and M took the left side of the trail to find a camping spot while T and I took the right side. The woods felt heavy, almost eerie. I constantly felt watched. We had walkie talkies and after hiking about halfway up the side of this mountain we met at a creek that ran directly down the middle. I should add that B has a lot of medical problems, a bad hip being one of them. So M and T wanted to head up to the top of the mountain and I stayed back with B. They called us on the walkie talkies and told us about skeletal animal remains with snapped ribs and ripped and tattered clothing they'd found. We headed back towards the van because T had taken my water in his backpack by accident. B and myself stopped to rest on a rock and after about five minutes we heard what sounded like a muffled huff. 
My dad is a hunter, so I know what wild animals sound like when they grunt or huff. This sounded like a deer, a very large deer. We looked around for a moment, however, we saw nothing and heard nothing more. We made it back to the van. T had started to come back down the mountain towards the van. From across the river, he saw a few locals and figured it'd be best to leave before causing a disruption. M had continued and was adventuring side trails. B and I were sitting patiently in the van, trying to catch our breath and recover from the sun. After about 20 to 25 minutes of silence, B radioed in M to do a location check and make sure he was okay. Before he could respond, I noticed him running towards the van, fast, very fast. I stood up and T came busting out of the trail. T could barely breathe and was visibly scared. T was shaking and ended up dry heaving because of the running. Upon questioning T, he told us that on his way down the mountain he had stopped to take some pictures of the creek and wildlife, and from behind him he heard a voice call out, Hey, come here. He didn't respond. T thought it was just one of the locals he had seen earlier. Suddenly the voice called out again, T, come here. It said T's name. He took off and didn't look back. M was the last one left in the woods, and by this point we were all scared. It was only our second night out of Michigan. Could whatever was in West Virginia have followed us? M ended up finding very large deer hoof prints, the size of his boot heel, a size 13 wide I should add. I was still trying to comfort T and get his breathing back to normal when M appeared through the opening on the trail. M was confused upon arrival. He looked at all of us funny. B asked him, what's up babe? And he told us that he thought he would have seen us at the end of the trail, not in the van. He heard B and T talking in the woods and headed towards him, yet none of us went back into the woods. B was worried and waiting for M's return while I helped T. To conclude the story, I should add that I am a witch. I've been practicing since around age 13. T was afraid and he's been my best friend for almost 10 years. It felt necessary to protect him. I just didn't know how necessary. As we headed back into town, T fell asleep in the car. M stayed with him just to be safe. B and myself went inside to get everyone Taco Bell. While we were getting our food, T woke up abruptly and immediately began shaking and panicking. Whatever spoke to him in the woods visited him in his dreams. When I got back out to the van, he was a mess, and when he told me about how vivid the dream was, even I was scared. I don't feel comfortable sharing the dream because it's not mine to share, but I can tell you, it was vivid and it was detailed and bone chilling. I did what I could with what I had available for protection spells and charms, and since that last night after the incident, nothing else of nature has happened to him. I also put protection spells over B and M. I'm very protective of my friends. I love them each dearly and each for different reasons. That being said, I have an idea of what happened in each of those woods those two nights, but I can't be certain. What I do know is that these creatures are very real and they've changed my best friend. Someone who once loved the night and is now as scared when an animal crosses the road. If anyone has any idea or can validate my idea, please leave a comment. And please be adventurous, but be safe. As a young teen, I just refused to sleep at normal hours, especially on weekends. Why? Well, that's because the house I lived in and the land the house was on was haunted as shit. Staying up usually meant seeing some freaky shit, and growing up in a small English town, well, that's as exciting as life got. So one night, when I was around 14, I was staying up staring out my window when I started seeing glowing blue and purple lights coming from the forest behind my house. We don't have fireflies where I lived, I don't think. I thought they were cool, so I just continued staring at them, trying to figure out what they were. Now, the way my house was set up, my bedroom window faced the forest in my back garden, and directly next to my room is a side gate that links to the front part of the house. On either side of the gates are motion sensor lights. So the lights in the forest may not have been paranormal, but what happened next most definitely was. The motion at the front of the gates triggers, casting a faint light into my garden. The night grows really silent, no more owls or crickets, and just really eerie. The lights in the forest seem to ebb and then just die out. I listen carefully as I start to hear scuttling on the wood of the gate. It's muffled, so I slightly crack open my window to get a better listen. 
Now that gate is always locked with a heavy ass padlock at that. To this day I've asked my dad if he ever left the gate unlocked that night and he stands by the fact that unless he's gardening the gate stays closed. This was spring so he might have started seeding so for my own comfort of mind I'm gonna assume he left the gate open. Anyways I hear the gate slowly swing open. The creaks of the wood were very loud against the silent night so the sound was very distinctive. The motion light right underneath my bedroom window switches on. Honestly, to this day I can't really explain what I saw. It was this off-white veiny kind of skin texture and was about the size of a child. It walked on all fours and looked just sickly. Its hind legs were significantly longer than its front legs and it looked to have hands or claws. I hate having to link back to creepypastas, but it honestly looked like the rake. Now I've gone through the possibilities in my head, trust me. It was too small to be the deer that frequented our garden. Also it had no remotely deer-like features. A badger or fox with a disease? Possible. However, I've never seen badgers or foxes with such long limbs and so disproportionate. Also this thing was completely hairless and human-like. The worst part about it to me was how it slowly and silently moved up my garden path before disappearing into the woods. The noises of the night started back up after that, but I was so shook that I didn't sleep that entire night. I'm from England, so I haven't heard of any folklore that matches what I saw. I know there were occult practices done in the woods behind my house, but I'm pretty sure it was pagan, hence not inherently bad or demonic. I don't know what I saw honestly. Any ideas? This is an encounter I had several years ago deer hunting during gun season in rural West Virginia. I was hunting on my aunt and uncle's land. I was situated in a tree stand on top of a ridge line and could see down into either side. Visibility was limited though due to the brush and trees. It was a little after daybreak and all the shooting had started. All of a sudden I hear this massive crashing through the underbrush in front of me headed down in between the two ridge lines. Whatever this was was walking on two legs clearly from the sound of it and it was big. I couldn't see much other than a large dark shape running through the brush. I've heard hunters before trying to flush deer that had bedded down and this wasn't that. It was something running to get away from something. The neighbors on that side were too old to hunt and do this. To my knowledge no one was in the woods in that direction of my stand. I didn't get a clear look at whatever it was, but I know it was walking on two legs and was either dark brown or black in color. Haven't seen it since then and I'm not sure if it's even still there now. I just know it was unnerving at the time. My dad even mentioned it to me when we met for lunch and asked if it was me or if I saw who it was. I told him what I saw and heard and he just said, huh, well that's weird. Don't know if it was a Bigfoot or some other humanoid. Also for reference, this was close to the Mothman sightings in West Virginia, but it wasn't the Mothman, that much I know. I don't really know what to classify this as, but to this day it still freaks me out, so I figured it belonged here. Before I start the story I'd like to give some context. This was about three years ago during a very rough period in my life, so every night I liked to walk around in our backyard for a few hours. Walking around in the dark felt very comforting, and I often had music playing to calm myself down. Up until the night of the incident, I had never felt scared or even vaguely uncomfortable, but after that night, I couldn't be out for more than a half an hour without getting freaked out. The night of the incident was just another normal night. It was around 11.30 p.m. and I was considering going inside soon, but then I looked up and froze in my tracks. Peeking around the corner of my house, just under the roof was a large shadowy figure. It looked to be about the size of a human and had an almost smoky quality to it. I could vaguely see the outline of the tree through it, so I definitely knew it wasn't just a shadow or part of the tree, but the thing that freaked me out most was how well defined all the limbs were. There was a clearly defined head as well as arms and I could see the individual fingers gripping the siding of my house. I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I started walking closer. As I was approaching it started to slip around the corner and I couldn't see it anywhere. I decided that maybe it was just my mind playing tricks on me, so I warily kept walking. 
it felt like someone was watching me, so I glanced back up. And there it was again. I got the feeling that I shouldn't turn my back to it. So with all the bravery I could muster, I made what I assumed to be eye contact and inched my way closer again. I guess I was hoping to intimidate it or something. It disappeared around the corner again and I chickened out and ran to my house as fast as I could. I saw it a few times again after that, always in the same place, and it always disappeared around the corner when I tried to get close. After a few months, it stopped showing up, and I haven't seen it since. I tried looking up shadow people, but my creatures seemed more transparent than most descriptions or images. I also never really saw the bottom of it, so I couldn't tell if it had legs or not. This figure had no facial features, just a seemingly smooth, emotionless face. I thought it very strange that I couldn't see eyes, but I'm glad that it didn't have any. I am certain that this creature wasn't just a strange shadow or a trick of the light. It appeared under full moons and new moons, and even once in the rain. The tree that was nearby had been trimmed back at one point and was no longer anywhere near where the shadow figure appeared. I wish I had a camera back in those days. I wasn't allowed to have a phone at the time, and I was listening to music on an iPod shuffle. But if it ever shows up again, I'll be ready to snap a picture. <laughs>